Okay, this is problem number 32, and this is concerns interest in a savings account. And it reads like this. Suppose you deposited $2,500 on January 1, 2004 in an account paying 5 and 3 eighths percent annual interest with interest credited to the account on December 31st of each year. On January 1 of 2008, the interest rate drops to 4 and 3 quarters percent. What will be the balance in your account on January 1, 2011? So basically, money's going to sit there from January 1, 2004 for, uh, until 2011. That's seven years. You never take any out or add any more in. And for the first four years, that's from 2004 to 2005, 2006, 2007, and 2008, it's going to get a certain interest rate. And then on the last three years, it's going to get a different interest rate. So we can use the basic idea of the geometric series only in this case. Uh, it's not really. It's only geometric series for the four years. And then it's another geometric series for the last three years. And it's not the same. But the idea is the same. In other words, if we take the initial amount, 2,500, then we multiply it by 1.05. Now, 5 and 3 eighths percent, we have to figure out what is 3 eighths uh, in terms of a decimal. 3 divided by 8 equals, that's. 0.375, so 375, this is actually 5 and 3 eighths percent. It's going to increase, so it's 1.05375. And it's going to do that for four years. So you actually do that four times. And this is the amount of money you'll have on January 1, 2008. You could actually calculate that. But we don't have to. We can continue to add on the four and three quarter percent, which is 1.0475, because three quarters is 75. And that's for the next three years. That's going to be the total amount. This is going to be, you know, money after eight, uh, seven years. And let me just do that in portions like the one. Here's, here's something where you can keep it in your calculator without writing it out. You get a more accurate answer because um, you don't get the round off. For example, let me take 1.05375 exponent 4 equals. That's about 23%. That's about right. Um, I'll kind of write it down, 1.23296. Uh, now I'm wondering if I can, if, if, depending on how good your calculator is, you can save that. So for example, I want to multiply this by 1.04. Seven five raised to the third power equals. When I did all that together, I actually got um, one point four one seven one four. In other words, forty percent, forty-one percent increase is what you expect. This is twenty-three now. Let me see if I got that right. 1.04 by itself, 0.04375, uh, uh, three times raised, three times is 14%. So that would be 1.14937. So it actually rounds off to 938. So uh, now 1.23 and 
It's 23 percent here, and another 15 percent on top of that. The, you know, the number is going to be around 40 percent. Uh, but when you actually multiply them out, uh, 1.23 Two nine six times one point one four nine three eight. I get that forty one seven one four. So my first calculation was correct. Now that has to be multiplied by the uh, twenty five hundred dollars that you put in. One point four one seven one four. You got basically you're getting forty one percent return on your money. Um, so if I multiply by two five zero zero, then I get three thousand five hundred forty two dot eighty five. Now here's where uh, uh, if I didn't keep enough decimal places, I might not get the exact number of pennies, for example. That's why in your calculator, uh, it's best to save the number in the calculator if you, if you can, instead of writing it down, and then you'll get it, it more accurate, right, to so your last penny. Uh, I think this one is right, but I did redo it in my calculator, so um, it's really only good to one, two, three, four, five places. That last digit might be off. So check that. But you get the idea. I don't know if they marked the wrong for that. I don't 